Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer, and this is Superhouse. Now, do you ever find yourself crawling around in nasty places and finding that you need a laptop because you need to be able to SSH to something or maybe you want to update uh, some firmware on an Arduino that's embedded somewhere like in your ceiling or down under the floor in nasty places like this. And I really don't like dragging a $3,000 laptop into this sort of place just because I want to be able to check out stuff published to an MQTT topic or maybe to flash an Arduino. Uh, some of that stuff I can do with my phone but it's kind of inconvenient with a little touch screen and you can't do uploads like you can't reflash anything from your phone so what do you do about that well maybe there is a solution i recently received a really interesting package it's this thing it's called pocket chip and it's a little bit strange it's quite hard to explain i'm gonna have to take a step back and talk to you first about chip check this out this is chip it's a little single board computer you can see from the scale of my hands that it's quite small. And you might be thinking, yeah, that's kind of like a Raspberry Pi or uh, maybe a little bit like the Particle Photon or one of those sorts of boards. So let's do a quick comparison to that. So we'll just zoom out a little bit. Here is a Particle Photon and here is a Raspberry Pi 3 for comparison. And as you can see, it's midway between those two boards, both in terms of physical size, but also in terms of features. Let's do a little comparison. So we have our three boards there. There's the Photon, the Chip, and the Pi. And in terms of price, uh, the Photon goes for about 19 US dollars. The Chip is advertised as a $9 device, but that's kind of a lie because you need cables and extra things to make it do anything useful. It's a little bit more than that. Raspberry Pi goes for around $35. And this is all in US prices. So in terms of processors, uh, the Photon has it's 32-bit. Um, it's got an STM32, which is an ARM processor. It's an ARM Cortex M3. The uh, chip has an all-winner R8. And that particular chip you may have heard of, that's what's used in a whole lot of the really cheap little Android tablets and things that you get around the place. It's basically a cell phone chipset, and that's 32-bit as well. Now the Raspberry Pi 3 has an ARM V8, um, which is a 64-bit processor, and it's quad-core. So this is actually four cores running at 1.2 gigahertz each. Um, the Photon runs at 120 megahertz and the chip runs at one gigahertz. So you can see so far it's pretty much in between the two in terms of performance. And um, we have one meg of flash on this. We have four gigabytes of flash on this. And on the Raspberry Pi, you put in an SD card, which could be a four gigabyte card. It could be a 64 gigabyte card. It's pretty common to use like eight or 16 gigabyte cards in there. It's, this one has 128K of RAM. This one has 512 megabytes of RAM. And this one has one gigabyte of RAM. So you can see it's really falling right into that spot between the Raspberry Pi and something like a particle photon. And these are really PC class devices, whereas this is more like an embedded system. You don't run an operating system on a Photon. You compile your code, it gets installed directly. Um, but on these two, it's a bit like a PC. You can connect up monitors, you can connect up a keyboard, you can run Linux on both of these. So what we've got is a board that really falls into that, that slot between when you would use a microcontroller and when you would use a compact single board computer with an operating system. So why would you want something that falls into that slot? Well, there are a couple of things that are really interesting about this little device. One is that it has an onboard power management system with a LiPo battery charger and little switch mode power supply. 
It's even got the JST connector on here. If you have a single cell LiPo, all you have to do is plug it in. It'll automatically charge while power is applied to this board. If you take power out, it'll just run off the LiPo. So it's basically like it's got a built-in UPS. Now, if you want that same sort of functionality on either of the other boards, or pretty much anything else that's out there at the moment, you have to build it yourself. You have to have an expansion board which provides the battery charger functionality and then uses the power from the battery to run the board. With this, it's built in. The other interesting thing is that because it's got the four gig of flash, you don't need an SD card to load the operating system on. That has both advantages and disadvantages. The advantage of an SD card is that you can just pop it into your computer, like into your Linux box or Mac or PC, and load a disk image onto it and then pop it into your Raspberry Pi and away you go. You can't do that with this because the flash is actually soldered onto the board. You have to load the code onto it another way. And you can do that using a bootloader and loading it on through USB. Uh, and there are other ways you can flash them as well. But it's not quite as easy as with a Raspberry Pi. But once it's on there, it's really fast. One thing I've found is that even though this is only a single core one gigahertz processor, compared to the Raspberry Pi's quad-core 1.2 GHz, for a lot of things, this thing actually seems faster. That's because some programs can't take advantage of multiple cores, and so they tend to rely much more on things like fast memory access. So um, it just seems that in, I found testing with OpenHab. OpenHab is actually more responsive on this little thing than it is on the Raspberry Pi, which really surprised me. I thought the Pi would just eat this thing for lunch. But this thing is nice. So I think one of these in a box with a LiPo cell as a battery backup could make a really nice little home automation controller, a good central system to run your whole house. And I'm thinking of experimenting with that. I might even replace my current Raspberry Pi with one of these running OpenHab and MQTT, and I'll see how that goes. So this at first seems like a solution looking for a problem because we've already got bigger more powerful boards we've already got smaller lower power boards that are more compact why would you want to use this well there are lots of projects where this really hits the sweet spot where it has the power management that you need it's fast enough it's got enough storage but it's not overkill it doesn't take too much power and it's not too complicated so i really like this board that brings us back to pocket chip so let's open this up and see what we've got. Looks a bit like a game console, doesn't it? Now, if you look in the back, you'll see it's actually got one of those chip modules plugged into it. And look, there's a LiPo and USB around here. So we could power it up. It's got a keyboard on the front and a screen. So basically this is like a, it's a bit like a game console, but it's running Linux and um, it's got built-in power management. Very strange device. When I first saw these, I thought, what the hell is that for? It doesn't look like it would make a very good game console. It's not a tablet, so you can't really game on it like a tablet. Um, the screen obviously just is no match for something like an iPad. It's not a laptop. You wouldn't do any serious work on this. And that would be crazy. It's got this little membrane keyboard on the PCB. But I'm really curious. I think this could be very interesting as a, um, as a Linux box that you can chuck in your work bag or in, like in your, um, your toolkit, take with you. And whenever you need to, you can just pull it out, power it up, and, um, and you've, got, you know, a you've got a console, you could SSH to it, boxes, I think this might be really useful when I'm in situations like hanging up a ladder and trying to configure something and I don't want to be trying to hold on to a laptop and you know SSH into something from the laptop while I'm standing on a ladder. I don't want to be using a tablet or something like that for that purpose. But this is built like a game console. It seems really tough. So it's the sort of thing that you could have in a toolbox, pull it out, power it up, Get yourself a command line, you could SSH into things, you could you know, watch MQTT topics while you're working on a home automation system and not worry too much about it getting damaged. And these things are really cheap. 
they're not going to be available for another couple of months for general access. This one um, I got as part of the Kickstarter project, so I got early access to it. It's going to be very interesting to see what people do with this. So I'm going to start this up, see what it, the out-of-the-box experience is like, and see how useful it's going to be. Well, how you see it here is exactly how it came out of the box. I haven't even started it up yet. It didn't come with any instructions in the box. It was just a box. This is it. You can see the battery is already connected, so I don't have to do anything with that. I thought maybe they would ship it without the battery connected. I wonder if this comes out. It looks like you can probably remove the chip module from the rest of it. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so it's slowly coming out if I give it a good wiggle. Oh, and there we go. There is the chip. It looks a little bit different to the one I have, too. This one is the next thing chip that I got from the Kickstarter project. And uh, this one has a bit of a different layout. You can see that the Bluetooth module is in a different place. And um, the configuration up here is quite different. The location of the, um, the charge port is different for the LiPo. So there have obviously been some updates in the design. But basically this whole thing is just a carrier for one of these chip modules. So I'll plug this back in, and we'll power it up and see what happens. Looks like this is the power button here. Press and hold this. It's alive. We've got a logo. I'll get rid of this yucky travel plastic. Wonder if this is a touchscreen. That would be cool. It looks like it is. You can see the resistive contacts around here, so I'm pretty sure this is a resistive touch screen. When you are finished with your app, press home to return to the home screen. Just like an iPad. Battery meter, Wi-Fi status, shutdown options, and settings. Tap here to end the tour. It all seems very straightforward. So it looks like we don't have any Wi-Fi at the moment. We do have some battery, but it needs a bit of a charge. Power and settings. Let's see if I can connect to Wi-Fi. Settings. Superhouse. Yes, that's the one I want. And now I'm not going to show you my password. Hooray, looks like we are connected to Wi-Fi. So, terminal. Let's see if I can use this as a terminal and connect to my local uh, OpenHab server. Well, I must say this keyboard takes a bit of getting used to. Ah, SSH command not found. Looks like I'm going to have to install a few things, so I'm going to spend a bit of time playing around with this. So here we are, back under the floor. But this time, I don't need a laptop. I've got Pocket Chip. I've managed to get the Arduino build environment running on Pocket Chip. So I'm going to flash an Arduino right down here, sitting under the house with no power or anything else. Just an Arduino, a USB cable, and pocket chip. Check this out. I've got a terminal running on it. And I have an Arduino compatible board, which is plugged in. Just see if we can see this in the dark. It's not a very convenient place to be working on this stuff, but I can do this. I don't have a big laptop to lug around. So you can see it's plugged into the handy USB port that's just on the top of the chip. And now what I'll do is I'll CD into the sketchbook directory and then into the blink project and I'll even open the sketch in Vim just so you can see that that can be done. See so we can do this in fact what I'll do is I'll change the delay I'll edit this sketch a little so you can see it's done And we'll put in, we'll make it 500 milliseconds delay on blink. And then do the usual Vim stuff of colon, write it out. And now we can do make upload. I'll bring the Arduino around into view. And then we'll hit upload. It's going to compile it. You can see it's cross compiling there for the AVR processor.
looking for the serial port and it's uploaded. Now you can see that the Arduino is running blink and it's got one second delays and then half second highs. So we've just flashed an Arduino sitting under a house with nothing but a pocket chip. So pocket chip might seem like a bit of a bizarre product, but I actually really like it. It's going to be 69 US dollars when it comes out in a couple of months. The chip module itself is really cool for a lot of home automation projects. So I reckon you ought to check it out. No, this isn't a paid sponsorship. I paid for the Kickstarter, all that sort of thing. So I'm just a happy customer, but I'm, I'm really impressed. Looks like they've got good stuff. See you next time.